Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you should understand and adopt. Today, I'm joined by Thomas Ferrer. He's the co-founder of Apollo, a platform on the Lightning Network that allows Bitcoiners to review products they love, find those they can trust and earn Bitcoin in the process. I really love Thomas's tweets and the memes that he posts about Bitcoin, which are a great way to communicate the core message of why we actually Bitcoin, the money we use is broken. Welcome, Thomas. This is actually round two, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We no. talked before. Great to chat with you again. Yeah. Happy to chat. Yeah. We talked before for like an hour and then realized that all the uploading and all the syncing didn't go very well. So we're trying, <laughs> we're trying again. So thanks. Thanks for coming on again. Um, I first want to do like a quick check, like which generation do you belong to? Are you a millennial or? Yeah, I'm a millennial. Yeah. So how how do you f- find your um your your efforts on on educating millennials? Like how how's that going for you? Um. Well, look. I mean, I think that millennials are by far the most uh, receptive generation to Bitcoin, or maybe maybe Gen Z. But um, you know, the the, the younger the younger you get. Um, the more receptive you are to Bitcoin and the less money you have to invest in it. Um, Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, you know, one of the things that's sort of interesting is that millennials are really the first, the first generation to predominantly take up Bitcoin. It's still not massive amongst our generation, but, uh, when when you go to like Bitcoin meetups and this sort of thing, it's people our age predominantly, um, mm-hmm. and that's it's actually not like that surprising because technology always seems to go this way. Um, I, I was I was just like curious about this, kind of digging into it. Uh, it was it's fascinating actually how if you look at internet adoption, it was exactly the same. Uh, if you if you looked yeah. at if you looked at if you looked at internet adoption in say nineteen ninety eight nineteen ninety nine, the number of people over fifty that had ever used the internet it was like it was like one in ten people. Uh, they they did surveys on this stuff, so to, to, so there's like a pretty good record of this. But at the same time, when it's like you know it's minuscule, it's ten percent of people fifty plus. But then you know in nineteen ninety eight it was like. 45 percent for people in the 25 to 40 range so Mm. it had it was already there and it was um being adopted but you know not not by older people and it's it's a pretty normal arc for technology so i don't think you know well bitcoin's proving to be very similar yeah i personally find it very uh, inspiring when i see like uh, older older people um who are already like into into Bitcoin? Who had like uh, a career in the traditional finance world, right? And eventually, kind of like saw saw Bitcoin. Like I know, I don't know because I didn't experience it, but I I can understand like why it's very hard. You know, like I think even for us, um, it's been hard. And personally, I think sometimes it's still hard. You know, like you you grew up in a certain a system that you never really doubted, doubted, right? And um, now, when you adopt something different, you still run into that old, like those old learnings, right? So, um, yeah, it's interesting to see these different generations. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's always so impressive when you do meet the uh, relatively rare, but you know, the like the the boomers um, that have have picked up Bitcoin and it. What I see in sort of that generation is that they're very receptive to the problem. Hmm. That it, they just haven't necessarily um, grokked or figured out that Bitcoin is the solution. But they're, they're very receptive. You know, they understand like way more people. There are way more people that understand the problem that Bitcoin solves than there are Bitcoiners out there. Um, but. You know the, the the rare ones that can put both both together. Uh, well, you know it's it's uh, very fortunate for them um, and, and and for their um their kids as well, I guess. But <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, um, but 
I would agree. Yeah, I think more people at least feel there is a problem, right? They they are well. Hopefully, people get triggered and they start like researching the problem. We'll, we'll have some tweets from you later on where there's like some nice illustrations of the problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree, and I think also you know I really want to talk to you also about like how you you know try to educate people and meme Bitcoin into existence, basically. And I think. It's really nice how you focus on talking, I think, more about the problem than, than about Bitcoin that's actually the solution, right? I think that's really good because uh, if people don't understand the problem, then they will never find that thread that, that could you know, lead them to what we think is the solution, right? For sure. I mean, the problem is top of the funnel because nobody nobody cares about like and it's Bitcoin is interesting in the intricacies of how of how it works. It's very interesting for you know somebody that's already a Bitcoiner. It's it's, it's endlessly fascinating. But you can't you can't talk to somebody about the details of um the way the way the network operates they don't want it like you can't go to somebody yeah. that you just can't you just can't open with the difficulty adjustment it just doesn't do anything for uh, <laughs> a regular a regular person and and it's perfectly understandable it really it really shouldn't it's far too abstract uh, um a concept so it's it's i mean it's always like this is it's not even a bitcoin issue it's actually just a communication issue you should just mm. always start with why like, why should I care about what you have to say? Um, and then when you, you know, dig into it, you can, explain, you can explain how Bitcoin is a solution. But if you don't start with why, nobody will, no, nobody will be interested. So, yeah. um, And it's also, um, you know, the, the way, the way uh, like social media works is that you you do need to have that kind of ability to connect with a lot of different people to kind of um, be attracted to your idea in order for it to spread. So you, it it doesn't necessarily it's not a great me like Twitter is not really the place to go on a deep dive into uh, the, the intricacies of the network because it's never mm. going to have that kind of um, viral potential that the problem will because that's just un immediately understandable for yeah. for a much greater group of people so what what made you first become interested in investing finance and like what led you to to bitcoin yeah well look i mean it, i i was someone like like a lot of people it just took a lot of a lot of touch points um you know i first i, I first came across Bitcoin. When I was uh, studying it, um, I studied actually. I did. I did like a my thesis on Bitcoin at university, and I I was just interested in it from it because um, at the time it was like the most volatile asset the world had basically ever seen. Um, you know, and since then there's been like a lot of cryptocurrencies that have you know come up, but yeah. at the t at the time it was it was interesting even just just for the the volatility of it and i i just i just found the um the, st the statistics about that very interesting so i started i started looking at that and then i uh and what did I, you I study mean, so I, I did i did uh finance and economics but like sort of like looking at it from like a numerical techniques or statistical point of view um but so i moved I, you know uh after university, I moved into sort of the traditional finance space, and um, that's when I actually really started to un properly understand what problem Bitcoin was solving. Because when I first looked at it, I just thought it was a kind of interesting thing, but I didn't really, I, mean, I thought it was fascinating, but I didn't really understand the, why we really even needed it. I, it was more, um, it's like, okay, it's this alternative payment network, but we've already got a payment network. Like, um, yeah. You know, and 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 what we have, you know, feels like it works pretty well. But then when I got into investments, um, and the world started to essentially 
you know, particularly we, we're at this point in time where interest rates are zero and you have this massive appreciation of assets across actually everything. It was like, it was called, it was in every kind of institutional conference you went to, whatever, it was called the everything bubble. Everybody could see it. Bonds, bonds that had this 40-year bull market, equities were just constantly running up to um, sort of really high level, you know, high PEs and all that stuff. And it was like, hey, there's a basically a bubble in everything. Um, you know, you've got Ray Dalio out there going cash is trash. And that's the kind of stuff that I guess started to make my um, – make me interested in what's what's happening here and then um you know i was talking to an asset manager who's who's like he was kind of talking his book about it about his stocks but what he was saying was uh basically the market's going to pump the market's going to pump and he was talking about equities but he was he was banging the table in a room i'm, I'm talking to him and he was banging the table and it was like i'm like why and he was like well we're about to start start QE2 and he's like pointing to these charts of QE1 and he's, and he's you know showing me basically when they do QE the stock the stock market the stock market pumps and QE and is the quantitative easing right is the, the the printing of money it's money printing but it mm. they the problem is is that but they call it differently right they call but you know they, essentially they, yeah. Yeah. What what they do is they they give it these fancy names so that it's not immediately obvious to the public about what they're doing. You know, it's we're we're doing some monetary engineering. It's based on our zero interest rate policy. We're going to do some quantitative easing. Like what? What? Oh, you're printing money. Okay. But that wasn't. Um, but once that, that 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 started to become clear, it's like, okay, the central banks are printing money. Uh, it's causing an asset bubble and everything. Um, and then, you know, 2017 came around and it was just this big wake up. I feel like 2017 was the um, real coming out party for Bitcoin in a way to um, tell the world that Bitcoin was was this serious thing to, to take notice of. Um, you know, all like all you know, all the people that believed in it well before seventeen. You know, all power, all power to them. But you, you really had to deeply understand um, the problems of of fiat money. That it, I, I, that wasn't like it wasn't necessarily obvious to me at that point in time. But it started to become really obvious around that point in time. And. Um, you know, I just had to, I had to evaluate at, at, at in, in 17 and, you know, there on after I started to evaluate, I had to revisit uh, some of my earlier assumptions about, about Bitcoin. Um, and Bitcoin has this sort of funny property to it where it's kind of an ego test because everybody, everybody that, um, like, Actually, it, it, it's it's one of the sort of interesting, unique properties of it that literally everybody that buys Bitcoin could have bought Bitcoin much earlier at a much cheaper mm -hmm. price. Like there's no that's that's it doesn't matter what price you bought at. You could have got a lot more Bitcoin at a much cheaper price, but you decided not to. If do you that. understood it earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you understood it earlier. But it's, you know, every person. There's basically nobody that first comes in touch with Bitcoin and then goes, yeah, yeah I'm going to like, yeah, that's not I really agree. a thing. It's not really yeah. a thing. You, you, you have to have multiple touch points mm -hmm. and it, it creates, it is, it is essentially an ego thing where you have to go, well, I just missed it before, but was I wrong? And you have to be like, you know, intellectually honest and sort yes. of, you know, have a, uh, you know, a small enough ego. Well, to humility. Say, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the humility. Exactly. You have to have some humility to be able to say, yeah, I mean, I, I screwed up before. Actually, I was wrong. Like, I, I mm -hmm. wish I wasn't, but I, I, was, I was wrong in the past. And so you have to, you have to be able to um, learn from that. And that, um, you know, not everybody can handle that, right? That creates a certain kind of um, derangement syndrome for a, like a 
a few, like a, like a, you know, a small percentage of the population. So that's why you still have certain people, um, you know, like Peter Schiff would be a, sort of a walking billboard of this, which is like the gold bug. <laughs> yeah. Not just a gold bug, but you just, he's in, like, I just think that he's going to, he's the type that like, because he, he, he could have, and he should yeah. have potentially gotten so much earlier. It won't matter. Like he'll be the one of the last people to yeah. ever buy Bitcoin because it's just too, it's too emotionally painful to yeah. uh, accept the mistakes you made in the past. Um, and it, it really is the kind of, it, what it does is it, it creates cognitive dissonance in people. I, I was talking to a, uh, a gold bug actually. And, um, he was saying, you know, I was talking about how really you have to uh, essentially your unit of account should be Bitcoin, right? That's the opportunity cost of um, all your investments. And his response was, well, you know, if, if Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, if, if, if that's the case, then look at, look at my, my home. It's gone from, mm-hmm. from, you know, 20,000, <laughs> 20,000 Bitcoin to 10 Bitcoin in the last decade. Yeah. And, and, you know, when I, when I listen and it's like, yeah, you want to, and it's like, yeah. And you want to hold a deflation, like you want to hold Bitcoin because of that. Like, yeah. it's like, yes. But his, his logic is like, well, clearly. But then it's, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> you know? it's like, clearly yeah. it's like, well, it's a broken, like it's a, like, no, clearly mm. it's just a bad network. Like it's like the Bitcoin must be broken if that's the case. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. A, it's just a cognitive dissonance is what it is. Mm. Um, so, you know, in some ways, the people that there, – there will be a whole class of people, um, probably the boomers, actually, who never even really significantly thought about investing in Bitcoins. So they're not going to have that baggage of, um, you know, particularly when it just becomes available via, um, say, the ETFs, right? There's going to be a whole bunch of people that they weren't going to buy it um, – you know the way the way you and I bought it. And they, they weren't. They don't want to um, self custody their Bitcoin because they're just scared of technology, mm-hmm. and they're scared. They're scared they're going to lose it themselves. So they they never seriously thought about it before. So they're not going to have that kind of baggage that has been holding them back in the past. And now it's just going to be when that when it does happen, and it's like, oh, I can just buy it with my trade account the same way i buy yeah they, buy stocks it's gonna unlock they don't the have whole, to like understand yeah. understand right they they, yeah. they will stay like a few layers separated probably yeah um and that and it's and that's 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 true for people but it's also um very importantly true for institutions because you know there are just there's a whole class of investors that have the majority of the capital that, you know, there's no realistic way for them to invest in Bitcoin in a sort of self self custodial manner. Um, because it's like you, you go to these, you know, 12 boomers sitting on a board of a pension fund and it's like, Oh yeah, we're going to set up a multi sig for you, and it's like, what? Like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be responsible for it. And it's just, they're yeah, they're not, they're not used to that. So, um, they don't, they're not going to have any kind of emotional baggage with Bitcoin's past because they never could have invested in it. But once they start, you know, what, 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 what's happening is there's easier and easier investment vehicles. Um. And when they have the opportunity to invest in it, it's just going to be like, it's just going to be, is it solving the problem for me? Oh, well. Yeah. And that's, and that's a question they have to face, but. Um, they will, they will probably only look at like the Kager or the, <laughs> the ROI yeah. they missed. And then they will be like, okay, I need to have this thing. Yeah. I really like what you say about um, that's, that's mentioned a lot with the people that i talked to like these multiple touch points right like you wrote your thesis about bitcoin and only a few years later you really got into it right like that says a lot like you already spent multiple hours 
um, oh, yeah. re- researching this, right? And you still didn't get it. And that's why I, I think this is an important message because like once you get it and you look back, you know, then you can say things like you just said, like it's about humility. It's an ego thing. It is hard to understand. And I think for people who listen to us and other Bitcoiners who, you know, just see Bitcoin as, well, I, I kind of say like uh, it's 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 almost, it's engineered ultimate truth, right? It's just a thing, you know, and it sounds so yeah. ridiculous. And I didn't think I would ever say this like four years ago, right? But, mm. um, but you know, here here I am. And I think that looking back, of course, it's easier. And that's also, I think, a challenge for us when we talk about this or like our own journey that we do give like context uh, so that it's not looking down on people that don't get it, right? Because we also right. didn't get it. You spent yeah. uh, probably 100 plus hours on your thesis and you still didn't get it, right? Yeah. So that's totally okay. I mean, it took me... I, I would say more than seven years or something to really, really get it. And I'm still learning right. every day. Right. So I think that's a very important message that it's not, it's not, it's not coming from a place of uh, like superiority or something like I understand it and you don't know, it's just really hard. And I think that in general, the message about, you know, helping people to, to start studying Bitcoin is honestly, I think very altruistic, like, please do it. You know, please yeah. dive in more because it is just really hard. But once you uh, start to understand it and st- also start to not unsee it anymore, right? Then I think that will accelerate, right? Like I think you only need like one or two things where you're like, "Wow, really? Does it work like that? <laughs> Does it work like that?" You know, whether yeah. it's about the old system of or, or or Bitcoin, and then you will accelerate in in. Um, well, your effort of studying, I think, because then you really want to know more, right? There's this like mm. place in between where I think you know people will 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 dive in further. Like, what what was that for you? Like, what's what's like the biggest thing that you that you cannot unsee anymore? Whether understanding Bitcoin or also the stuff outside. Well, I mean, there's a there's a lot. I think there's there's a lot of different layers to it. One is all the 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 fiat the fiat problems. I mean, understanding like fiat is actually uh, going to infinity, um, and like not 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 in like five hundred years time, but like mm. actually. Um, well, some people, you know, we we don't know for sure, but it it might be this decade, and and it, and it, it might not be this decade. It might be in the next. Certainly, going to be in our lifetime. Um, yeah, and, and, and when you and, say and, infinity, you mean the amount of yeah, money, right? Yeah, I mean it's and it's, therefore also the value down. Right. I mean, the value, of course. Uh, Yes, the the value declines as the as the supply increases. Yeah. Um but that that's only one angle to it because what was probably maybe um more important for me to understand is what makes Bitcoin uh why isn't like the thing about the thing about the arc of technology is that um, there's always like a new thing that comes along that replaces the old thing. Uh, you know, f- Facebook replacing MySpace, and it's like, well, it's like, okay, I get the idea about cryptocurrency, say, but isn't Bitcoin just like a version one that's going to be replaced by the next thing? Because I think that there's a lot of people that get um, get stuck on that sort of point, and that that was. Uh, that was probably one of the issues for me where it was, um, you know, understanding at that point in time, particularly, I didn't necessarily have a good enough understanding of um, open source software, I guess, as a whole and understand, you know, this idea that we will, like, Bitcoin is as good as we can possibly make it today and in the future if there are new technologies that come along 
to like if there's a way to make better money in the future which which there might be in some way in the sense of um something we cannot imagine about the way uh the way the networks operate a way to make way to make it better what what it takes um what i now understand which i didn't back then is that yes that's what that will be immediately um grafted onto bitcoin like whatever whatever new kind of dis- technological discoveries we can make along the way that's just going to make bitcoin stronger and better so it, 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 it's like how um you know the, the 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 right analogy is going bitcoin is like the internet everything just makes the internet bigger and stronger and better um we're not we're not going to build a second second internet mm-hmm. um and it's and it's just finding that right understanding about that versus oh we're going to find something better and it's going to replace bitcoin it's like no nothing's going to replace bitcoin but when you know humans do have a way of um discovering uh new technologies that that can make things more efficient and make things better then when that happens bitcoin is going to take all those superpowers so that was something that was um because then then that's when you realize like bitcoin isn't isn't uh isn't going to be re- replaced by new technology it just makes bitcoin stronger so just bitcoin just gets stronger over time um and then look it, it it is nothing the whole process is a constant discovery there's no one point where your conviction is like you know s- sign and done it's just it's just like oh but what if this and you, you have to do a deep dive and try and get the, get to the bottom of all these deep fundamental um problems which is why like there are so many different types of um queries of lines of attack against bitcoin that people have addressed over the years and the thing that is sort of great for say today is just that when you have when you have when you can think up a potential problem with it well there's somebody that also that's already thought about that pro- problem 10 mm. times over and it's been debunked but that wasn't so true, you know, like, may, it's, it, it wasn't true even five years ago, I would say. It's certainly not 10 years ago, where um, you had such a vast, deep amount of resources that, you know, like, well, like now big Bitcoin podcasts and videos and books are all abundant, but that wasn't a thing. That wasn't a thing five, ten years ago, right? No. So, um, you kind of had to figure it out yourself, and that makes it a lot, a lot harder. But um, yeah, now, now it's just the, the the sea of information. There is like, if you're willing to do the, if you're willing to learn, it's all available. It's all there for you. So that's what um, you know, like, and we're all we're all so fortunate to be able to um lean on each other like that like that's yeah that's that's what makes it interesting as well because um it's a mutual value exchange right like it's not a zero-sum thing like i'm me making a podcast you building a bitcoin company like we both try to add value and we get value from it when you know the network grows bigger we educate more people more people use it etc right so it's not as in perhaps like a fiat world where there's a lot of zero sum games actually and right. people use it using each other um for single benefit, not mutual benefit. Right? Yeah, it's a social network. Um, mm. it's a social network in, in every sense of in every sense of the word. Um not not just for you know, at at its at its core it's it's an idea that's that's shared by everybody that's why that's why like it's it's the people that make that make bitcoin it's not the machines and where that's what that's something that people don't uh that's that's like that's one of the issues that people don't necessarily understand because they think let me just 
just change the code because it's just it's just lines of code and code is easily manipulated. And it's like, yeah, you can change the you can change the code, but you won't be able to you know you can um, you know I try to explain this to people by it's like you can fork Christianity if you want, like you can have your yeah. own you can have your own religion where you know. Jesus was yeah, a, you can take out three sins, right, yeah, <laughs> or something. Can, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can, yeah, exactly. You can create all kinds of funky, funky rules and for Christianity. But the problem is, is that how do you convince people? Um, and it's very well. If you think that, it's better, you should try it, right? That's also the 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 comments that a lot of people share when. You know, you see uh, these people from Greenpeace, they talk about change the code of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is destroying the world. You know, mm. they're, I personally think it's very malicious, like they're using studies that have been de debunked, etc. But the entire point is, what is funny is they don't understand Bitcoin and they have this opinion because what they can do is they can just change the code themselves because yeah. it is open source. They can copy Bitcoin, change what they think is bad and start greenpeace you know bitcoin the greenpeace version but they are actually not they they are not right yeah well it's but that proves it's, the point <laughs> a bit well it's it's funny on so many levels because not only could they do it but if they actually did any research they would find that yeah like it has been done like bitcoin yeah. proof of pr proof of stake exists you know bitcoin proof of stake it doesn't uh There's no, there's no network adoption there because, as an idea, it sucks, and everybody knows that. So yeah. you can't, you can, you can change the code to be Bitcoin proof of stake. I mean, people have already done that, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it it doesn't um, give you any value or create any value because no. you can't convince everybody else to go along with your um, story. Yeah, and it's also back to that um, example of the internet that you gave, right? Like in the beginning, it was obscure and, you know, like people didn't see the value, etc. But the longer something exists and the more the more people join that network, the more beneficial and um, relevant it becomes for you to start studying it, right? So, so you will, in a way, get sucked into it if enough quote unquote, you know, people around you, and that could also be true, you know, content content that you consume, right? Um actually see it and start participating in it and, and seeing the 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 benefit of it or the value that it gives them, right? So that's uh, I think in general also I don't know if that's the theory behind like the technology S curve, right? But there's always early adopters and people who build and then they show more people and then yeah, it just compounds um, over time. Yeah, I mean, the longer... I mean, a, a third of the world, as crazy it is, it's born after Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin right? Like, you know, it, it's, it starts to... Um, that's, why, yeah. that's why Gen Z people generally are going to be much more and, and are much more... Um, receptive to bitcoin because it doesn't it doesn't seem foreign to them it's actually always been around and it um and and if you and if you don't have to unlearn a whole bunch of ideas and it's like oh okay it's it's just another currency like all the other currencies except that it's decentralized um and it's a fixed supply and then you start Then, then you can just start doing some basic maths on it and go, oh, okay, it's a fixed <laughs> yeah. supply of 20, 21 million and mm. the other one's got infinity attached to it. So um, where would I want yeah. to put my money? And it, it, I, I, I think um, that, yeah, that, that, that definitely, like that Lindy effect, um, the, longer, the longer it goes, the harder it is for anybody to really um, question it. And it's not, that's not a, bitcoin thing that's just true of of all ideas really in general yeah you just said unlearn what, what's like the main thing you think people need to unlearn be, before they can understand bitcoin well look i mean i think that there's a lot of people particularly in the older generations that they're just like well it can't be money unless it's like there's this idea that 
it's only it's only possible to have money if the government deems it money. Like you, 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 there, there's, there's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wrong idea, actually. But yeah, it's, it's, it's. We this decide idea. what the money is, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the. Well, in prison, it, the cigarettes are money. That's I, I like that example because the the, even though they are in a centralized, controlled system, the prisoners right. still figure out how to exchange value with each other. You know, whatever that value. Uh, whatever the value is that they exchange, they denominate it in, well, cigarettes, yeah. for example. I I think it's uh, now that that's such an important idea, and I I, I think it's really interesting how um, a lot of younger generation people get it because they played you know computer games, and there's a lot of games out there that have their kind of um, something like. You know, when I was younger, I played played this game Diablo two, um, and in in this game, in this world where you where you know you build up your character and you have different items and all this, it, there's an economy that that builds in the network of people. And what happens is that there's no top down centralized um, government controlling the the world of Diablo two. It's just it's yeah. an emergent phenomenon, and what what happens in that in that what happened you know when i was playing that game is that currencies emerge within the game like where certain items start to be traded like like money because it's actually much more convenient for and it money is just so important and so useful in society so we don't have to be like bartering with each other like oh, i want to give you you know, my sword for your shield. It's like, well, is that really worth it? It's like, well, what if we've got um, <laughs> yeah. this this like stone that we all recognize as money? Then that 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 can make you know that makes things just so much more um, convenient and easy for trade. So money just emerges naturally, and um, if you see it, you know, you can read you can read that. But you're not convinced. But once you've experienced that in the real world, like if you went to jail and you know had cigarettes, or if you you know had some kind of computer simulation of it, where you're actually in in a, in a digital world and you witnessed the emergence of money, um, you're going to learn a lot faster. Um, yeah. So I actually do think, and it, 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 it's it's quite uh, amusing to me because I've seen um, a lot of Bitcoiners actually talk about playing Diablo two, and ha- <laughs> how that um, like I've I've seen Breedlove and a whole bunch of other Bitcoiners talking about that, and, and Gigi talking about that as well. And it it it's just like you get this sort of super um, interesting snapshot of real world economics, but sped up because it, like, yeah yeah in in inside the game there was you have an evolution, you know, an emergence of a money, and then what? And then what happens in any kind of system where you have money? People start going, "How do I create more of that money?" Um, yeah, and then and then you get a hyperinflation of the money, and then and then a new money comes up as a result that's harder than that money, and you just live through you live through yeah. reality, but like really, really quickly. I really like this example because I think. Well, you mentioned Robert Breedlove, right? He has the podcast, what, what is Money? His entire podcast is about the question, what is money, right? Because it's such a big question. I kind of follow the definition, you know, like money is a a technology or something that we use to exchange value with each other, right? But when people think about money, they think about the dollar bills, right? Or the euro bills, but that's a currency, Right, so I I like the gaming example because once you can trade in a certain context, trade whatever you deem has yeah. value, right? Whether in game items, whether locally, uh, I trade my uh, orange juice for your uh, breads, whatever. Um, people will find a way to find like a a, a third thing that will represent the value because i don't always want your bread or you don't always want my orange juice or your shield or sword or or whatever and i think that's a really good thread for people to also like pull on right because if you 
agree with that and then you think further right okay well but if the dollars or the euros that are used are uh, that i use are defined as money who controls the money right or who should decide what that money is worth should the people who use the technology decide that like in the diablo game mm -hmm. right or should a third party some institution with other people that i don't know should they decide what the money is worth right and once you start like kind of asking those questions i think you you start taking those little steps towards towards at least understanding like the system that you are in some way forcibly part of hmm. and also questioning your own beliefs like did i understand that before no what do i actually think about it well it makes me uneasy <laughs> right but, but damn now i have to do something right y you can stay ignorant but i think at one point you cannot be uh, consciously ignorant <laughs> anymore right because the money affects your day-to-day -day or weekly life and your interactions and and your hopes and dreams or children or whatever like it, it it's you know permeates everywhere yeah and the thing that's uh the thing that the thing about money is that it's there is an exchange rate that people can see like it's so um in your face with bitcoin so whatever whatever a point you became aware about it fast forward five, ten years and the, you know, inevitably Bitcoin is, you know, 10 to a hundred times more valuable than, than what it was at, at one point. And it's really hard to ignore that forever. Like it's, it's just extreme. Like that's why mm -hmm. I think that's such a big reason why um, we get these kind of waves of adoption. I, I mean, Yes, there's like, of course, there's like a greed element to it, right? And, or, or, you know, there's always fear and greed. But I don't think it's as simple as like fear and greed because what also happens is there's waves of understanding. Yeah. And, you know, when, 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 when Bitcoin, like in the next sort of bull run, and Bitcoin starts, you know, Bitcoin's at 100,000 and higher or whatever, all these people that were looking at it, it's such a, um, catalyzing moment for them to question their existing priors because you once you've looked at it and then got you know dismissed it mm. and then you're satisfied that it's died and now you've been like really happy that you dismissed it <laughs> yeah and then it comes back that's such a glass shattering moment for uh Everybody, I think. Every, I think every Bitcoiner has had that experience um, to some extent, and 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 every person will. And it, 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 it's um, particularly as well because Bitcoin is this social network, and so what what happens also when the price goes up is you know more and more people are are, are into it, and it starts to be like, is it kind of um, acceptable for me to be a part of this network and you don't you know like only certain types of individuals want to want to be in at the very very beginning because they don't want you know only certain types of people want to be um doing things that most people are not mm. you know you know like and 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 for for various different reasons from an, if you're like an investor an investor you just have career risk. I mean, even if you're if you're managing like a pension fund or something, you you might even be buying Bitcoin yourself. But you're well, that's not why Plan B is anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, 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 exactly. It's like you you might mm -hmm. even be you might even be buying it yourself. But it's like, why would I take? You know, I know it's going to be volatile. I was like, why would I sort of take that risk myself? But over time, the career risk goes away because more and more people see it as being acceptable. Yes. I mean, 
once you have kind of a uh, head of BlackRock being like, you know, yeah, I like Bitcoin. I believe in Bitcoin. It's like, well, it's hard to laugh at somebody for believing in Bitcoin. It's just like, mm. you, you're gonna, you know, so, and that's just, that's true in every, every step of the way. I and mean, that was true in, in 2020 when Michael Saylor um, really got into Bitcoin big time. And then a whole bunch of other people. Dismissed it before big time yeah, as well. Of course. He dismissed uh, yeah. it before. I mean, that's, that's everybody. No, but does. I mean, to illustrate, like, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, uh, it, it, well, look, as more people you respect come into it, the fear of being. Um, doing something stupid goes away mm. and that um and that's also why like you know like twitter or x is is so uh, important for people because when you have that kind of network online of bitcoiners that's like a constant reminder like no matter what happens to the price like you're not uh, you're not crazy. Like you, you, it's easy to kind of like question yourself because you think you see something that, you know, you walk around the streets and most people in in you most people you meet don't see what you see, and you think you see something uh, quite extraordinary. And it's like it's easy to question yourself, but when you have so many people that uh, like like-minded people on in your in your kind of uh, digital world it provides that um reassurance which is what um, which is what everybody needs actually so yeah. yeah a few weeks ago i went to my first bitcoin conference ever in amsterdam and um i went to this talk um and the whole room was packed i couldn't find a seat anymore so i had to like stand in the back in like the hallway and look in and at that point, I actually realized, like, damn, all these people see what I see. <laughs> this is very yeah. cool, actually, yeah. to be amongst those people. And I had a lot of conversations with lots of different people, with lots of different backgrounds. And it's just really, really nice to do get some confirmation, right, that you're not crazy yeah. and, well, and seeing something. And, yeah, I love that. And also, I think... Um, what I what I I love what you said about you know then you see someone from BlackRock or Fidelity you know these people say like uh, Bitcoin can transcend currencies and it's exponential gold etc you know like that sounds like promoting and shilling it a bit right obviously because they want to launch ETFs but I also I personally have like experience in in traditional finance as well and I walked around in these corporate companies like stuff like that does not get said before they absolutely know. Right. Even they convinced the the legal lady who's in yeah. in in the tower on the eleventh floor in the corner where, you know, you come with your new project or idea and say like this is what I want to do. And then she she's very strict, you know, and will say, Why do you want to do that? Right? Like they convinced all these people. And they right. took along all these stakeholders within this company all their investors, all these things, like they don't say this for nothing. So they understand, you know. And f for me, that's like also a nice confirmation in the sense like I'd rather for those companies not to have Bitcoin and it's only, you know, <laughs> just citizens like us who, who hold the Bitcoin and not these corporations. But when you hear something like that, you have to really think about, you know, like they actually, they, they know. Like they understand, they will never say these things without actually understanding, you know. And that's um, that's something that I thought about when when you just talked. And also, um, what I think is a good awakening moment is uh, if people go to um, it's probably free, but if you go to tradingview dot com, which is like a trading chart uh, tool. Um, we talked about like price and value, right? And when in the beginning you talked about like houses going up, but the houses go up in the number of the currency, right? And when you say like the, the currencies will go to infinity, it's mainly the, the units will go to infinity, but the value will go down, right? So 
the value of a house or houses has not really changed. Yes, the price, the number people see, right? But the value, yeah, a house is not more important than a hundred years ago, right? A roof and yeah. walls and and windows. So I saw this. Uh, British Hoddle shared this on Twitter. If you go to tradingview.com and you first take like S and P five hundred, Nasdaq, gold, housing market index, and you put it in price, you see it. It's all going up. Right, so the units of the yeah. of the currency they're all going up, but when you put it in M two, which is the money supply, everything is down. You can pick any any asset, any big category of assets, and everything is down except one. <laughs> and that is just so crazy to see. Like that really doesn't make this an opinion, right? Like it's actually. Uh, it's actually happening, and I, I would love to share that with more people. Like when when people like you and I talk like this about Bitcoin, it's not it's not opinions. Like this is actually mm. happening, all outside of our influence. This is already yeah. happening, right? So please look at that. If you don't want to listen to a person, just look at that screen and think about what what that tells you. Yeah, and I I think I think you made a a really. Um a really salient point about it's all out of our influence. It's completely out of our influence, mm. which is, which is why, um, it's, which is why like part of why I guess cat, cat wants to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Hey cat. Um, which is why it's part of why, like I feel so comfortable openly, um, advocating for bitcoin um like on on twitter to to people because it's like so you're not you're not yeah, doing it's not it. like you are the founder and you're shilling it like that's no. not what's happening yeah. no and and by the way like there's no there's no world in which i would like i can't there's nothing i can do to you know, move the needle on the price, right? Like I can't, like, like if somebody, like I talk to somebody and I'm like, I genuinely like, for me personally, I don't care whether you buy or sell. Like it doesn't affect me at all. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for you, uh, I would, I would recommend you get some Bitcoin. I think so because I can see what's, what's happening. I can see, I can see what's happening to, um, you know, I, I can see what's happened to these fiat currencies, and I can see what's happened to Bitcoin, and it's 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 it's, it's very obvious to me. But you know, it, it, there's nothing there's nothing that uh, there's nothing that I can do to influence that, right? So mm -hmm. this is this is a phenomenon that's that's happening um, regardless. Now, I, I do think that there are there there may be small cases around the edge where. I can't affect Bitcoin, but I can definitely affect um, the people around me. I can I can definitely help more people, you know, get onto get onto the lifeboat of Bitcoin, and I, I, that that I want to. Um, but ultimately, these are forces far greater than any any individual, right? This is like a no. Bitcoin is you know. Honestly, it's ten thousand years in the making. If you look at monetary history, right? So it, this is just the natural evolution of. Um, it's a natural evolution of money. It's like it's like we're on that. We just happen to be on the tip of the spear of it because it's you know twenty twenty three, and we happen to be alive in this moment. But like, it, yes. it, it, it's 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 a <laughs> just like an you know incredible situation to be a part of, really. Yeah. Yeah, well, and not during the seashell or the glass beads era, right? So we are just, right. we are just lucky. I I agree. Um, well, but you are doing something. You are actually actually with your brother. You are building a company uh, called Apollo. Can you share a bit about that? Like, why? How did you get started building that? And like, what do you do? And how do you see its future? Yeah, sure. So look. It's it's three of us. It's myself. It's it's uh, my brother Julian, who's the CEO, um, and our other co-founder Sahil. And what what we're building is 
Uh, essentially, it's it's a place, it's a platform to discover and compare Bitcoin products and services. Um, but what we're trying to do is really kind of bridge the, dr the trust gap that people have, you know, not just like with Bitcoin, but also with the kind of services that come along with it and try and bring sort of, um, I guess, I guess sort of decentralize that in some sense by using user reviews to actually sort of separate the signal from the noise with regards to these, you know, different products in the industry. We had, you know, what happened last, what happened the last couple of years with FTX was a disaster, right? Um, and we don't, we just, we don't, we never want to have that happen again. Um, and, it, and if we had, you know, a platform where you could actually find out what's valuable and what's not, um, it would just be so useful. Um, and so that's what we're building. And the way we do that is we're trying to source, source reviews for products. And then the cool thing about it with, you know, sort of being able to use Bitcoin as a, as a payment network via the Lightning Network is that it means you can make instant global payments to people all over the world at zero fees, which is kind of, it's kind of like magic, actually. You can make these micro payments to people. And so you can incentivize people to come write a review and they can, they're just more likely to, you know, they come to our, we, you know, we get, we get people from all over the world writing reviews of these products and they do it because they get paid in Bitcoin to write the reviews. So it kind of a, um, creates a really nice flywheel of uh, value for value for everybody, really. You have the people that come in and they get paid, you know, for their time to write a review and then it, it creates all this um, valuable content that then we, we can uh, aggregate and present and just find like a really great source for other people to come in and be like, oh, you know, I want to discover and compare products and now I've got uh, a better tool to do so. So that's that's really our focus. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I love that you're doing that with uh, with your brother too. Um, must be a fun fun endeavor. And also, I thought about this last week. Like the next forty or fifty years, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, right? Like that's also the timeline of your company. Like you are you are building towards the future. So it's yeah. really cool. Well, look, that that's. The thing about it is, is that from a from a self interest point of view, um, I want to we we want to attach ourselves to this wave because we know you know it's like every every business has to be built on some sort of uh, you know secret or something that you know that other people don't, and it's like we know we know there's this absolute wave of adoption coming for Bitcoin. And mm. so we can uh, be there to help facilitate that and, you know, provide value to people uh, to that. So, it, so it, it just like we know this wave is coming where we have no doubt about that. And so we just want to be able to be there to provide value to people when they do come, um, because that's, you know, like that's the foundation of a good business. So, um, yeah, look, I mean. We, we're because the foundation is, you know, so so fundamentally excited and bullish about Bitcoin adoption that it just makes so much sense to take that kind of macro trend um, and build a business on it. And then it just so happens that, you know, through the Lightning Network, we're able to use these like micro payments to do something something cool that just like wasn't you know feasibly yeah. possible before, but is now. So. Um, very cool. I uh, I will I will follow it with uh, great attention, and uh, excited to see where it goes. Um, to round up, like I wanted to dive into some of your tweets. Cool. Um, you know how how you are memeing Bitcoin into existence, but I'm going to share my screen here and see if that works. Oh, that works perfectly. That's great. Um, I love <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> For the people who are not watching, it's uh, the text is, if you don't believe me or, I, or don't get it, I will try to explain it to you because this is very important. And it's a picture that shows the price of one OZ, uh, one ounce, is that ounce? Yeah, one an ounce of gold. One ounce. In, in, yeah. yeah. 
an ounce of gold coin. Yeah. You explain. <laughs> well, look, it's an ounce of gold coin in 1933. And so the, you know, the fiat to, 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 um, to pay for that. And then all the fiat to get that same amount of gold in, in 2020. And you got this, you know, huge bundle of cash. Um, and the caption is, uh, obviously a, a play on the, the very famous, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto quote, um, you know, where he says, actually the kind of the opposite, he says, look, if you don't, if you don't get it, you don't believe, believe me, I don't have time to explain it to you. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look, well, the, uh, yeah. well, this ties back into what we talked about, right? Uh, the, the, the one ounce gold coin is, did not change. One ounce of gold is one ounce of gold, right? Yeah. The number of currency units the dollar in this example that you needed in 1933 was 20.67 but because of all the money printing there are more currency units but their value goes down the f- mm. um, whereas the value of the gold coin stayed the same right so the the currency in this case is the denominator of that same piece of gold and now you need 1770 units <laughs> of the same, yeah. of the same thing the same do- the same dollars right um yeah. Look, and it, it's it, it's it's funny because I, you know, there's a lot of people in the, the replies to that tweet about, you know, saying, yeah, well, this is why this is why you know, gold. And it's like, it's like, look, gold was the strongest, hardest money, you know, in the universe until Bitcoin came around. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yes, it is true. You know, if this was 50 years ago, you know, if, I, if we were t- talking 50 years ago and we were having this conversation, we'd probably be saying, like, get your butt, you know, gold, gold bars. But um, something has been uh, made better. You know, it's, it's been uh, digitally transformed into... In, 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 into something that's that's harder, h- harder to make, easier to transfer. It's just better, and it's it's synthetically perfect. Is what it's synthetically perfect money is what is what it is. Um, yeah. And so it's like, I, you know, it, it, people people can interpret that as uh, it, it, the, what the, the, the gold thing is interesting to me because. Um, what it does is it kind of it's an intelligence test in a way. It kind of exposes the uh, the people that they're, they're kind of gold bugs, but they don't know why they're gold bugs. <laughs> like mm. they 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 yeah. they're gold bugs, but they're gold bugs because it's like oh yeah, because you know history. It's like it's like no, it's like you need to. Well, you can think that way, but that's it's not very smart. You should actually try and understand why gold why gold had these properties over this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people get that and some people don't, but um, that's what this tweet is about. Yeah. Um, the, next, the next one says, capitalized letters, it says Bitcoin. <laughs> and you, you shared um, an image of a text. Where, where is that from? Do you remember? Yeah, it's a, it's a quote from Wei Dai. Um, so like mm. a hugely influential um, cryptographer. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it, it it speaks for itself, but I think that this is like, um, if it's not obvious that this is happening, it it like particularly over the last um, few years, then I don't know why. Like, I I don't know how. I mean, maybe like I had look. And the I, quote I don't know is what, happening. You mean reducing the freedom of. Yeah. Um, the citizens. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, the quote says, there's never been a government that didn't sooner or later try to reduce the freedom, uh, you know, of its of its subjects and gain more control over them. And, you know, it goes on to talk about how um, we, we have to make it, we, we have to use the technology to make that impossible for the government because it's an inevitability of government. I mean, this is a comment on, it's not a, comment about any particular government it's actually just a comment about um human human nature um yeah and you know like for 
I think it's very obviously the case. We, 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 it, this would be harder to pitch to somebody 10 years ago. But we, you know, if you live through the COVID experience, which we all did, then it shouldn't be um, all that controversial an idea, right? It, 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 should, it should be pretty um, stark and obvious to people. But I don't, I don't, I don't think... I think um, well, this is for people in Western countries, I'd say, right? I mean, there's a lot of countries <laughs> um, that 20 years ago also experienced this, right? So I oh, think this is especially... Course confrontational for for people in western countries and i think um i i i usually think that like we grew up in such a great time and everything went well and there was always money and water and food and whatever like we didn't people didn't think about the government or the incentives that are there or not right or like the type of zero-sum game that they are uh, part of or the people in it are part of right and so that's also why sooner or later something like this will happen right it's not so again like i think that this is something that is not really an opinion like if you look at history mm -hmm. <laughs> this yeah. has happened over and over and these were not different differently wired people than w what we are now right so it's uh Again, I think something that when you share it, a lot of people think like, oh, that might be your opinion, but it's actually just a reflection on stuff it's that's a, happened. It's uh, a lesson before. of history. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> this, this picture is from Breaking Bad, I think. Yeah, it is. Where uh, Jesse hugs, uh, what's his name? Walter. Walt, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you say, it's a lot to swallow at first. In the picture, Walter says, me and the friend who finally researched how fiat money works, is crying, etc. Why did you tweet this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I've, well, I mean, I think it's funny, but... but uh, It's funny. But, uh... I mean, is this like an unseen thing, right? Like you cannot unsee it once you see it or something? Well... I mean, it expresses a, it expresses a couple of different things. One is the, I think I think all the Bitcoiners sort of, you, you know, all the Bitcoiners see that, and I I am that's that's you know, I'm Walt in that 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 picture because you know you've been trying to convince, you're sort of like, at, at a certain point along the way, it's almost um, I don't know tiring or you 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 see something and and other people don't see it and you don't like mm. oh, why don't you see it and it's um, it can be uh, maybe dispiriting or whatever, but then it's like it's like when they, when they finally when they finally see yeah. it, it's like oh, it's, that, a, that. it's a happy moment. Yeah, yeah, it's both yeah. a happy moment, but you're also acknowledging. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, it's a lot. You know, it's hard. It, it's it's hard because when you when you finally understand Bitcoin, you also kind of understand just how fucked up the rest of the world is, um, and so. It is like it is kind of a it is a lot actually. Yeah, nice. Yeah, this one was great. Um, this one I also really liked. Oh, I uh, I zoomed in on my screen. Uh, we you mentioned crypto before, right? And that it also confuses people like the other crypto assets. Um, and this this uh, you you tweeted beware of crypto, and you tweet a quote. It's apparently a Turkish proverb, but it says the forest was shrinking, but the trees kept voting for the axe. For the axe was clever and convinced that the trees, uh, convinced the trees, that because of his handle was made of wood, he was one of them. Right. So I'm a cryptocurrency. I'm I'm one of the yeah uh, altruistic good good guy <laughs> good guys. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But whereas Bitcoin is. A decentralized protocol that just runs and includes lots of different uh, discoveries. Everything after Bitcoin is kind of an another version. Well, uh, yeah, how would you say that? Like uh, a, f a flawed version of the same thing or an attempt at it, right? I think as uh, there was a report by Fidelity that said that Bitcoin is akin to fire or the wheel. There's no better fire. There's no better wheel. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And the thing that people have to understand is that um, 
It's because of its properties. It's, it's like it's not. It's it's because it's the only decentralized currency that isn't controlled by anyone. Um, that that makes it that makes it what it, what what it is. You know, it's not it's not about it's not about the the fixed supply. It's about the credibility of the fixed supply, because. Mm. You know, like the U.S. government today, or, you know, any government today can be like, hey, look, we're not going to print anymore. <laughs> we're going to just say that. And it's like, yeah. oh, okay, then we've got to fix supply, right? Right? I mean, it's like, well, well no, because it's not, it's not credible. Um, and Yeah, you, you know, don't let yourself be enforced, basically, is, is yeah, it, and what it's, that and is. It's, and it's not just the... It's not just the the credit it's not just the fixed supply it's actually the credibility of the uh permissionless aspect of using the money because if you're if i'm using um you know somebody else's somebody else's coin and then i'm the government i can go to that person i can say well you better stop them using it you know or i'm going to put you in jail <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and they're going to comply with that with you know they're going to they're going to comply with that but the magic of Bitcoin is that there's no there's nobody to go after because nobody controls it. So, yeah. you know, it's actually a very interesting thought experiment. Like, there could be a world in which um, you could, as it as the way the world played out, there is only one Bitcoin. But th- there is a, like an interesting theoretical world where. At the exact same time that Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, you also had, say, in China, um, the creation of another, you, you, like another sort of Bitcoin at the exact same time. And they developed almost like, an, and maybe, you know, people weren't talking with, you, with each other or communicating with each other. And maybe they ended up creating like parallel Bitcoins. It's like theoretically mm. possible that you could have the exact same properties of Bitcoin in another network. Like maybe if there are aliens, you know, in another galaxy, they've created their own kind of Bitcoin. Like it is theoretically That possible. there's another Bitcoin in general, you mean? Yeah. Like the same yeah. type of discovery. Exactly. Um, but yeah. in our world, as it turned out, you know, there is only one and there's, and, and mm. you can't, and like you can't redo it. So you can't yeah. have like another one now, but um, so you know, yeah, you be be aware of it because when people try and you know talk about their own their other crypto, it's yeah. just a distraction. Basically. All right, last one, a Nietzsche quote: "I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on I can't believe you." Well, it ties into the to the other one with <laughs> from Breaking Bad, right? Like once yeah. you see some things and you understand that you now understand it differently basically yeah there's lots of other things that you start questioning yeah i mean i look i'm a i'm a huge fan of of nature and i think uh i think there's so much um you know we can learn we can learn from him about uh the way the world works and the way um you know how to live a good life and i learn you know i learn a lot from from bitcoin as well um and so like i would i would love to see um you know more of the uh Nietzscheans in in bitcoin i think it's a perfect fit i mean bitcoin is ultimately for everybody i guess but um I yeah. think it, it makes perfect sense for people that, um, you know, are attracted to the ideologies of both uh, have, have a lot of similarities, I would say. Yeah. Oh, I had another one. Oh, this was the Roman Empire one. Uh, it's, a, it's a picture of a, of a Roman soldier or leader, and he says, Watching the Roman Empire collapse again, but with Wi-Fi and memes this time. Yeah. It's, yes. it's actually happening, right? It's just, well, it, we saw the TikTok trend. Um, 
why like what's your thought behind this one yeah i mean look uh, it speaks for itself but it, 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 yeah. it's, it's 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 pretty funny um and i think i think it's wild uh, actually yeah. i'd say right uh it's it's uh almost absurd actually mm -hmm. but like it, it really is uh quite quite silly really when you think about it but um we because you sort of wonder we will never know well it's not it's not really clear whether like what did they you know when that was happening back then did they did they know about the collapse or i mean they they obviously knew when it was collapsing like or battle the inflation for real for real <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah. They, 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 they they you know mm. but um yeah, yeah I mean, it's, look. what I think here is like everything you read about something in the past feels also very distant. Like that happened to other people. They were different than me. You know, it's just very far away. And that once you realize that you could be in the same situation, mm. right? Yeah. Then it's actually I, wild to think that you are aware of that, that you are in the situation as where you say the the people in that time, probably most of them weren't aware that they were in the, that situation. Yeah. And, and I do think that it's not like a perfect parallel by any stretch because um, we, we, we are just like, everything happens so much faster now because mm -hmm. of technology. So we like, Whereas it took 500 years for the Roman Empire to collapse, we, we might see a sort of collapse and revolution and, and ascent um, very quickly. You know, it, 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 like, it, it's all, um, I'm, I'm still, you know, in some ways, in some ways, you know, I'm pessimistic when I, when I realize, when I think about the way the world is, but I also, um, am you know fundamentally optimistic about about where is like i think that um you know like i want to be alive in 50 years time because i think that the world is going to be awesome i do believe that um mm. even though like yeah we're, we're witnessing some sort of collapse um, today and i also believe that to be true but um it's just it's we're, we're in a very uh strange time in the uh with with our like technology adoption and and um yeah well, just, human it's, evolution it's, energy is, yeah in essence it's, right it's, so like every every people every human is always at the tip of the sphere of humanity right you know every person that's ever lived is yeah it's been true for them but <laughs> yeah um the difference is is that is that uh we you know like the technology that we have is is um could potentially like it, it it's non-linear basically it's non-linear mm -hmm. so that's why that's why there's the potential for our living standards to like dramatically improve really quickly uh in a way that like wasn't really possible um in the past if yep. as long as we don't like you know screw it up uh which is also possible <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's lo lots of turmoil but uh, turmoil but i agree with you like the 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 futures should seem bright to you because we do also have like lots of technological advances and it should be it should become better Mm. Um. Yeah, I lo I love these memes. I'm definitely uh, will link to all your Twitter. People can follow you for more. Um, I want to ask you last the last question that I, I ask everyone the same thing. Um, what's a what's a core belief that that you will never let go? Uh, well, look, I I, I think I, I think I have to uh, I'd have to say you know 21 million Bitcoin really um because that's. <laughs> Like that's 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 the heart of it, right? Um, 
that's there are some things we can we can talk about with bitcoin but that will never change awesome thanks for sharing thanks for this conversation um where can people follow you online and where can they find your company yeah sure so um x account is is thomas underscore farah so thomas and then it's underscore f-a-h-r-e-r and then uh you know you can you can find you know apollo where heyapollo.com so um yeah google apollo or heyapollo.com and you'll find you'll find that um yeah you know cool. write some reviews that'd be, be cool to see get some yeah. get some bitcoin yeah, I'll 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 link to uh, I'll link to this in the in the show notes so people can find you easily. Uh, thanks again for this conversation and uh, let's stay in touch. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, looking forward to it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke. That's at B R A M K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.